Hi, I'm Tom. Minor spoilers ahead for the Resident Evil remake. A lot of people already know about the Resident Evil series. It's about three core features, zombies, iconic characters and scares. There are many great moments within the Resident Evil remake. For instance, the first zombie you encounter, the dogs breaking through the glass in the hallway, the first person view of the monster walking down the staircase, and so many more. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one particular moment in the Resident Evil remake that stands out for me towards the end of the game. I'm talking about the transportation of the fuel supply capsule. It's a moment in the game that doesn't get as much praise as it should. I think because of how many intense things happen in the game, this moment often goes under the radar for some. The Resident Evil remake originally came out in 2002 on the Nintendo GameCube. It was later revamped and brought to modern day in 2014. The plot is pretty straightforward from the beginning. An organisation known as STARS have sent out one of its team named Alpha Team to locate their Bravo team, which has gone missing somewhere in the Arclay Mountains. When the team arrive via helicopter, they find the wreckage of Bravo Team. Shortly after, they come into contact with vicious dogs that make them retreat to safety. The only safety they can find, however, is a large mansion. They enter, and soon realise that the mansion has many dark secrets. The game opens with the player having to choose between two characters, Chris or Jill. They both have their own perks. Chris carries a lighter and can be useful when disposing of certain enemies. He can take more damage than Jill, but he carries less items. Jill, on the other hand, carries a lockpick in her inventory, which can be handy for opening certain doors. She also has extra inventory slots, but she takes more damage from enemies. They both share similar storylines, but differ slightly in terms of gameplay. Along the way, Chris and Jill have encountered many fearsome creatures like giant snakes, sharks, huge spiders, mutated plants, and of course, the terrifying Lisa Trevor. They have witnessed it all, or so they think. The last quarter of the game takes place underground. There is a secret passage revealing a lift. The player takes it and they are greeted with different scenery. The walls look grimy, the music has a tense feeling. The zombies are now all in lab coats, which signals to the player that the infection has took over even in the darkest depths. The hallways have now opened up and the player is forced to take things slowly. Many zombies lurk around in this area. This area of the game is fairly linear compared to most sections of the game. You enter a small room within the facility where you can see a sealed hatch behind a glass container. While inspecting the fueling device, it gives you a warning saying that it contains a highly explosive chemical, nitro compound. You then have to find a capsule to carry the highly explosive mixture in. You continue searching the laboratory and you enter a generator room. You follow the path and then you find the fuel supply capsule. The player retreats back into the room with the fueling device, then places the capsule inside and it fills up. The game then gives you another warning saying that running could result in a fatal explosion. This is interesting as you have not come across anything like this in the game previously. You are completely vulnerable. You have to walk. If you run, you will explode. If you fire weapons too many times, you explode. If you get hit, you... Well, you know what happens. You have to take things nice and slowly walking past mobile enemies. Once you place the capsule back where you found it, energy is restored. This is an incredibly tense part of the game that sticks with me. This moment in the game is thrilling for sure, but it is also equally slow because of how open to attacks you are. Throughout the game, you come across multiple enemy types. You either fight them or run away from them. It's a gamble that's entirely down to the player, and it's always wise to take the safe option if you don't know what to do. You don't really have the luxury of choosing in this particular moment though. You have to complete the task as quickly as possible. In the original Resident Evil, there are so many differences and similarities to the remake. The original set the tone better at the time. What? with its cheesy but equally scary B-movie vibe and dark undertone. In general, the remake built on from that and added more puzzles and areas. In fact, the original still had the lab section of the game, but it did not have the frantic fuel supply capsule moment. The original had much larger areas but included more enemies, whereas the remake made the area more confined. I'm glad the remake made more adjustments in this area. It definitely needed more creative moments for the player to enjoy. The music in this game is one of my all-time favourites. The soundtrack is incredibly dynamic in certain areas. The save room theme, for instance, is important as it's much lighter in tone and it signals to the player that they are safe. The songs go on in a loop and never die out, unlike in some games. The composer, Shusaku Uchiyama, has taken inspiration from the original, but put his own spin on it. Going from area to area sounds seamless and suits the horror theme. They all have eerie high-pitched moments within each song, including the save theme. We get used to games using sound and music to signal to the player that something has changed. I like how this music doesn't sound intense within the lab. It gives an element of uncertainty and uneasiness to the player. In the lab, you come across these nasty bastards that knock you off your stride. 
They are new fly-like creatures known as the Chimera. They possess the ability to climb walls and ceilings. If you don't have a defense item equipped, they can kill you. They sort of act similar to the hunters, but they are more nimble. This is not something the player would like to run into while carrying the compound mix. The most efficient way to deal with these creatures is just to take care of them beforehand. Occasionally, they like to use the vents to get around, so it's best to act fast. Alongside obtaining the fuel capsule, the player runs into something strange along the way. Over the course of the game, you collect CDs called MO Discs. You have no idea what their purpose is until you are in this area of the game. In the facility, you come across these strange machines that look incredibly similar to the Nintendo GameCube. You can finally use these MO Discs, which in turn, activates a mechanism that will eventually open a door. When you go through, you are in a large open area that is a prison. Depending which character you are using, you will see the other behind the bars. It's an interesting feature in the game to include an optional rescue mission for a main character. If you rescue Chris or Jill, it will ultimately have an impact on how the ending will play out. I love it when games take away abilities and items temporarily, so that you have to play it differently to what you're used to. There's a terrifying moment in another survival horror game, Silent Hill 2. Spare a thought for me playing through the boat section of the game in order to capture footage. The game makes you remove important items like weapons and a light source in order to enter a lift with a weight limit. It then puts you in a new area and you are completely helpless. That exact feeling of helplessness echoes while carrying the fuel. The reason why the game may seem harsh at this moment is because the player has experienced some tough challenges throughout the campaign and it is the next step up for the player. People who have played this section of the game before know how important multiple saves are. Over the years, Resident Evil games have often dabbled in different genres like horror, adventure and third person shooter. The Resident Evil remake certainly features these elements. The director of the game, Shinji Mikami, said in a GameSpot interview that I decided to think freely without being tied down by traditional genres. I also thought that the sense of despair that you generally get in horror wasn't really well suited to games, so that was the jumping off point. Not of a new genre, but of a creation of a game that wasn't tied down by traditional genres. This interview is in relation to the original game, but it still applies to the remake. The sense of horror is absolutely present in the game, but it also implements other genres. Overall, the fuel supply section feels more like a thriller than a horror, because of how on the edge it is. Mikami's later games took inspiration from his earlier work. A similar game that Mikami worked on, Dino Crisis, came out in 1999, only a few years after Resident Evil and it also included many scares. The player had more control over the character and their actions. The game was essentially a Resident Evil game but it featured dinosaurs instead. One feature I can remember fondly is the use of lasers that act as shutters. The player can use the lasers as a use of escape but it also adds an element of risk which is what survival horror is all about. Getting back to the fuel supply section, this moment in the game feels like an escort mission, except you are the escort. Carrying the compound around and avoiding the enemies is a real pain, as you are usually okay when it comes to getting hit. You can take a fair amount of damage and usually heal up, however, in this moment you are fragile and getting attacked is the last thing you want. In other games, an escort mission will make you worry about the person you are protecting. In this segment, you worry about yourself because you are so vulnerable. Early on in the game, you get defense weapons that act like a get out of jail free card when enemies grapple you. They are incredibly useful. However, while carrying the explosive mixture, you can't use the defense item as it acts as a fast movement, making it a greater risk for detonation. The fixed camera angles work really well in survival horror. This is something to keep in mind when thinking about the enemies that you can't see. It becomes incredibly important to listen closely so that you know which way to go. When carrying the compound, you can't afford to make many mistakes, and so you have to familiarize yourself with your surroundings. The zombies are fairly easy to deal with, but the Chimera are a real pain. Sometimes you can't see or hear them, but they are hanging from the ceiling, ready to pounce. The fixed camera angles really help create tension in this area. It can be a real scare when you don't know what's around the corner. You will want to get around these enemies as quickly and efficiently as possible without having to move too fast or getting hit. What also works well with this moment in the game is that this is the final section, and so, you expect more or less the same mechanics that you've already seen. It throws new locations, enemy types, and a new way of playing for a limited time. The added feeling of this is coming up to the end really makes the moment stand out for me. It's almost like an adventure game that has taken you on a long journey, and this is the finale. So there we go guys, this is why I think this section of the game is memorable and deserves more recognition. This is one of the times where the game flips on its head and it makes such a slow part of the game feel exciting. What's the best moment in a Resident Evil game that stood out for you? There are so many great ones to choose from. If you enjoyed this video and want to help out, feel free to drop me a like, that would be appreciated. Thanks for stopping by, and have a wonderful day.